if you if you really want to know answers to stuff about yourself, just like sit on your bed and ask them. But you've got to really if you and if you really want to know the answers, you'll get them from yourself. You just have to ask, and it's all there. Welcome back, everybody, to the Martial Mind Podcast. I'm Ed. I'm here with Ryan and John. And today we're going to talk a lot about kung fu. We're going to talk about vulnerability, and we're going to detail some aspects that are going to help you with your training. Yeah. <laughs> I just love the like just two hours of us just looking at each other and the camera like it's paranormal activity just like fast forward like they're just in the corner. Oh a terrifying movie. <laughs> Traumatizing, I might even know. Um so just yeah, not good. Apparently that's not scary. I'm like, what do you mean? That's like the most like real life horror movie I've ever seen. Just what? like people getting like assaulted activity. by a ghost. <laughs> the dude, Ouija that... board catches fire. So where, where dude, the war dude. Me, Mika, Mika, wasn't it Mika? Right, that was Mika. that was that was yeah. the, the husband's name. It was like, I don't care if you're from the depths of hell. I have a camera, and he just gets like absolutely murdered. Oh my he god, gets murked by a ghost. A Great demon. first date movie, one hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. That's for for those of us uh, those of us that were around during the uh, that were know, that were of dating era. age in like two thousand nine. Yeah, yeah, you're in your thirties now. Remember, what go. were you like twelve? <laughs> No, I uh, I was probably um, yeah, not too far off from that actually. I was I was I was, I was probably I was probably like fourteen. Back when Ryan's voice was, "Hi, it's Ryan. Leave a message." It's not that much. I have to really work to keep it. It's like Elizabeth Holmes, the girl from uh, what was that, that company that got uh, she was like extorting all the investors, and her like voice was not even what it actually was. No, no one knows I, what I'm talking about. Um, it was I the, can't, I can uh... It was a girl who basically like defrauded a bunch of investors by like a, doing a technology company that like isn't. I think it was like either. Uh, it had to do either with like genome stuff or some, or sequencing or something, and she like it was she. Just, oh, oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, she yeah, was like, yeah, I actually about. talk like this, and she just doesn't. She just doesn't talk like that. Yeah, no, I've I've heard of that woman, like one of the biggest frauds of the century. Yeah, yeah. wasn't it like a senator that pretended to be Jewish also. Oh, that that's um. Oh, what the hell is that guy's name? I, I haven't even been paying attention. <laughs> But like he's just like, yeah, I, like I'm Jewish, and they were like, wait a minute, no, you're not. I, like, I never oh. said I was Jewish. He's like, come on. He's like, I'm Jewish. Oh, what a repugnant <laughs> statement, dude. But he he was serious, <laughs> dude. <laughs> you're like Jewish, like no, that's that's not. A... Dude, that's a guy that could like, definitely cop out. that guy could definitely like trip his way into like a KKK meeting. But he's like, ah, all right, you oh, know, like, I, up, yeah. I don't know how I ended up here, but there's wings. Yeah, so he's like, ah, <laughs> dude, so, that. Oh. So we're, we're playing I'm, bingo? I, I'm Jew. Ish. Dude, you could have said anything else and it would have been better. Like, you yeah. could have just said another, like, racial slur and maybe it would have been better. They'd be like, no, 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 that's not what I meant. Oh, let me clarify. I meant I kind of just act like a Jew. Huh? Huh? And they're yeah. just like, no. It's like, all right. What well, makes you think yeah. it's okay? Yeah. Like, it was worth the try. Did he win too? I, I, don't remember, I don't remember that. No, story. I think he was already holding office, and I think he might have also lied about his, like one of his parents being killed in nine eleven. Yeah, he like lied about a bunch yeah. of stuff. He like yeah. lied about a lot of stuff. Bad much guy. Like, much like every politician, for yeah. the most part. He was like also on the Black Hawk helicopter with uh, like when that Biden guy from was, NBC. Yeah. Who was like, <laughs> I was on a Black Hawk. Like, no, you. I, we were shot at. No, you weren't. It's like when Biden, <laughs> Biden was like, I graduated at the top of my class, and it's like, but your grades indicate you were like a C student. He's like, that's the top of the class I was in. You're yeah, like in the bottom four like, percent of your class. Yeah, You're yeah. not at the top of your but, class. But I had the best ice cream. <laughs> I had the best ice cream in the whole class. Macadamia. Macadamia, not ice cream. Chocolate macadamia. Do they even make that? <laughs> they do now. They should. Yeah, but you were also in a school. But Jerry's you were also in like a school with five people and like a wood burning stove in the middle of it. So like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he went like, to the same school that like Abraham Lincoln went to. Like, yeah. Ye old like learning in a log cabin somewhere. Yeah. Ye old New Hampshire University. <laughs> yeah. It was like I went to university. University back then was just like. Like getting cholera. Like it was like you, <laughs> you just mean, got a disease and then got a degree. Like Biden looks like like an action figure that got left out in the sun for way too long. <laughs> all the color left, you know. It's like it's like uh, one side is all faded, the other isn't. Uh, yeah. none, of the, none of the arms work. <laughs> yeah, it's, exactly. It's just the joints in place. Like, <laughs> um, nobody can fall off a bike quite like him, though. You know what I mean? <sighs> it was a graceful fall. I love that the secure like like Secret Service are like so like fuck him that they just let him fall off the bike and they were just like. Ooh. Shit, look at that, you know? Like, none of them were like, oh, we'll help the president. They were like, damn. They're just, waiting, they're just waiting to see if they hear, like, glass break when he yeah. falls. Like, just like, I mean, I mean, it is sad. Like, it is, like, I mean, they're just, like, because it's such, I mean, clearly, of course, he wants to be president, and if he knows that he's president, I'm not sure. But I don't think but, he realizes. But, but I can't debate anybody this year. Dude, I'm that, we were it. just talking about that before. That is wild to me. That they're just, like, 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 demo, like, democratic process. They're just like, hey, let's have an exchange of ideas. And the president's like, no. 
It's like, yeah. what? He's like, going to pass. Yeah, well, you can't just pass on that. It's like, that's why. Was he going to have Kamala Harris come represent him? <laughs> no, come, just come out just yeah. doing this. Oh, my, oh my God. God. Please, no. Oh, please, no. Is that a reference to something? Yeah, I think it was a video of her coming out on stage. It was, it was just like her... She's like doing the Elaine dance. I got, yeah. I got to find that. Just, oh just so She's like, can... I'm just taking the new skin suit for a walk. Like, <laughs> just like an absolute, like she just has like dead black shark eyes. She's like, yeah. hi. And she's in jeans though. So, you know, she's a real person. Yeah, she's she's super, a real down to earth American. Super yeah. duper I got relatable. Levi's on. Come on. <laughs> you can afford Give me all your social You can security. afford Levi's. Eat the rich. <laughs> um, anyway. Dude, Levi's are not. Like once I became an adult, I'm like, wow, jeans are not cheap. No. 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 It's, it's like people used to have a pair. I now I know why. Well, it's like the uh, the, the Jocko Willink or origin jeans. They're supposed to like, last a lifetime, but they're like two hundred bucks a pair. Oh Jesus! You're just like that have, like, expensive. You just have like two like. Well, th well, think, well, think about it. Like, think legs. about it. Like, there, there was there was an old thing about the dude like uh, like a like a worker can't afford nice boots, so he keeps buying cheap boots. But over the course of ten years, he spent what he could have bought one pair on of boots, boots. One pair of boots for if he would have just saved it up. Right, right, and that's the case for buying quality stuff. Right. Yeah. Man. So. Speaking of quality, we had a quality class last night. For sure. For sure. Um, the test is coming up, and we have a couple people going for Black Sash. Um, we're going to get our yeah. – we're going to have our second female Black Sash ever, um, who is a uh, young lady. Um, not even 20, I don't think, but a genuine badass. And it's yep. going to be getting her Black Sash and going away to college and still finding a way to train and coming home to train whenever she can. Um, so we're very proud of her. Uh, I believe uh, Lasher Adrian's son is also going for his black sash. Oh, he is? He may potentially be going for his black sash. Mm, and yeah. also my brother Blake is going for his black yeah. sash. So big moves. Blake big is test. Blake is is, uh, is a Puerto Rican Samo hung. Um, he he is <laughs> just so funny. He is. He's Puerto Rican Samo hung. He's Puerto Rican Irish Samo hung. He, he's he just he's a big dude, but you can't let you can't sleep on him because he he he's a testament to like what mental fortitude can give you. Because even when he feels down on himself, he still shows up and he does the work as much yeah. as he possibly can. Yep. And he's come such such a long way. He's like truly a testament to like where you can go. Yeah. Which is what I, the point that I bring up, Sifu Leo in class last night, he had us like run a form, do mountain climbers. Get up, do the next form. Get down, do mountain climbers. You know, like so mm -hmm. it was actually less cardiovascularly uh, detrimental than just like doing your forms back to back mm. to back to back to back with no rest but you still didn't get any time to really rest you had to learn how to control your breath and catch your breath while doing mountain climbers mm. you know um, it was pretty horrible <laughs> but <laughs> but the good horrible but this this is the point of the test is the test is going to be horrible are you going to let your knees touch the floor or are you going to just rather it's like the it's like the concept of like you're not going to do 300 super clean push-ups but you're going to do 300 some kind of push-ups you know what I mean? That's for until sure. They did, and until they tell you that you're done. It's not even so much so the fact that, like, you need to be able to do 300 push-ups. You need to be able to do at least, like, 100. But, like, you know, you need to be able to push yourself for that time and not quit and give up. So it's more about the mentality of it. So he brought up an excellent point, which I wanted to touch on, um, that do you – would you like to – have a certain skill level? Would you like mm. to be at a certain place? Or do you want to be at a certain place? And I talk about this all the time, but I think he phrased it um, in a way, he phrased it in a different way that got me thinking a little mm -hmm. bit. Because I'm, cause I'm always like, I'm always thinking to myself about how, you know, I'm pretty hard on me. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty hard on the people around me. But it comes from a place of love, you know? Like, it comes from a place, like, I'm real with people. Like, you gotta suck it the fuck up, and you gotta push through, and you have to understand that, like, your feelings don't really matter in in, in this instance. Like, all these bad thoughts that you're having, the, I don't know if I can, and you can't listen to that shit at all. Suck it up, keep pushing, move forward. But he brings up a good point on how you can kind of, like, you know... Do you would you like to be there? Would you like to be a black sash? Would you like to be an orange sash? Would you like to attain a certain skill level, or do you want it? And if you want it, do you want it bad enough? Mm -hmm. You know, do you want it bad enough? That separates the hobbyists from the real martial artists. You know, that's that separates the McDojos from the real schools. Like, would you like to be? Ah, yes, I'm Sensei so and so, and blah blah blah, and I have sixteen black belts and forty seven different styles. You know, and it's like. And, and and you can't see your toes and you have no martial skill and the next thing you know, you're doing no touch knockout videos you know mm -hmm. like because uh, they're so real no touch off no but that's that's videos. what I'm saying like it's it's this whole thing of like um 
you know, like the emperor has no clothes. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Right, like right, you, right. You, you, you don't realize that the person who's in charge, just because they're in charge, people like like think well about them or they, they, they don't question their skill they don't question right. their ability they don't question what they're saying they just believe it and because they believe it they think they're doing the right thing they think they're in the right school like there's a school out here on the south shore that we know a couple people that used to go there where they were like throwing knives at each other and shit mm. but like they never sparred they never did anything they just did wild crazy shit they're just like trying and to they commit all, murder yeah and they all thought that <laughs> they were like they all thought that they like they literally like the guy's the guy's nickname is crazy you know what i mean like i'm not yeah. gonna say his name but like his nickname is literally crazy yeah so like um you got places like that and you yeah. have places like us where like we train hard and we do wild shit but the wild shit has practicality you know what i mean like somebody i check somebody with my shins they're gonna know mm -hmm. you know like i'm not the best fighter on the face of the planet but i have because of what i've been through and learning how to test and learning how to how to be a black sash i have that that push through that 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 don't give upness you know what i mean that I, I believe that if I was ever in a real altercation, even if you beat me, even if you kill me, you're going to have to, I'm going to be really hard to kill, mm -hmm. you know? And that's, that's what you want because people don't realize how easily they give up. So if your instinct is to crumble, you will crumble under pressure. Mm -hmm. But if your instinct is to push through, you will push through. I brought up to the beginners class um, that yesterday as well. Uh, you know, I said to them, um, what did I say to them? Because I just had a complete brain fart. I just thought about something else that Sifu said, and it just totally threw off. <laughs> Turned off a switch. Everything in my brain just went powered like, down. Boom. Just like the living room that had that information, he just like turned off the light, and he was like, "Oh, well, all right, oh, wait, where oh, am I?" Oh where? shit! It's like when you walk into the room and you forget why. Just hmm. oh, constantly. That's yeah, every all the time. Day. But so I'll I'll get back to it. So another thing that Sifu was talking about was the fact that, um, you know, we do this. Oh, I remember what I said now. We do this not because we want to be badasses or we want to fight in the ring or we want to do UFC and shit like that or to beat people up or to be the meanest, toughest motherfucker on earth. We do this because it makes us better people. The whole purpose of the training, the whole purpose of you versus you and having, you have to test that against another individual because it, it's more pressure, you know? Like the whole purpose of the fighting and everything is to enhance your, uh, your, your, your inner strength. And then be that beacon of light to everybody else around you, like we have in the school motto. You know, I will be a pillar of power for me and those who need it around me. Like mm -hmm. you know, like like you, that's how you cultivate that. If you can't even carry it yourself, how can mm -hmm. you take anybody else's baggage on and help them? You're no good to your community. So what I said to the beginners was that we, you know, things that I used to crumble under don't even affect me anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's because of the training. And that's why I push them. Mm. That's why I push them. Because I was just like Sifu in in the 7 o'clock class. I walked over to a group and I was like, you give me lazy shit right now. If you keep giving me lazy shit, I'm not working with you. And I just walked outside and let them go. Because, mm. you know, you, you can only tell the same people so many things so many times before you have to just lay it on them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right, right. So it just affected me. It made me, it made me feel that. Now, I'll start with you because... You, you're kind of like you went through a little bit of a renaissance and then I'll ask you the same question. Um, when did you decide that this was something that you wanted and not something that you just would like to do? Uh, it happened, I think, at two different times and at two different um, intensities. The first time, I think, is when we kind of went through our like um, um, – you know, bushy tailed phase at the, like in like intermediate and oh, like, like bright eyed and bushy tailed. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I forgot the first part yeah, of the like, phrase. Yeah, because like white sash to yellow sash is just like ah, and then high yellow sash is like ah. <laughs> Can confirm. <laughs> You're just getting a deeper voice and like more depressed. <laughs> oh um, no! But but so I think the first one was there, but it was not. I didn't have as much information about the system and just and just I didn't have as much experience. Clearly, you know. So then as I got more experience and also as life kind of started happening more um, and I got into my like early and especially mid 20s, like it just I kind of just like fell apart a little bit. And I kind of, you know, as, I've, as we've spoken about ad nauseum is just moved kind of moved away from the school and wasn't, you know, there'd be times I'd be in there once a week or twice a week. There'd be times where I wouldn't be there for like a month or a month and a half, you know, um, and then from there, I think honestly, really after I got my black sash is really where it happened again. You know, once I got from red 
and moved on from there, the momentum was building to train more consistently. But I think after I got my black sash work, because it was, it was basically black sash test. And then immediately right after that was we went to the deadly art of survival convention. And then we had this, the Myrtle beach seminar, which was yeah, like, you got which, thrown right into the yeah. thick of like what it means to be a disciple, right. which, which, which I got to see more of that cultural, like the cultural edu- education community aspect of what we do that I think was missing for me because I'm someone that gains a lot of um, energy and momentum and power from going to like expos or like, you know, meetups or things with people that are like-minded that do similar things like seminars or stuff like that. I get a lot of momentum from that because it's just, you get to talk to, you get to talk shop with people and it's just that camaraderie of um, about something that you can, you know, cause we get, you know, we get blinders on where we're just dealing with the same people every day where, you know, which is good because, you know, we have a tight knit community, but you don't get that outside exposure to other people that do similar things to what you do or do, you know, different styles, you know, and, and can, but can, sh- are still in the, on that same wavelength. So mm. I would say, um, beginner level and then also all the way beginner level and black size level is really where it happened at two different times for different reasons with different levels of, um, experience, you know, and definitely this time is much more satisfying in the sense of I think it satiates parts of me that I didn't know were there earlier where it was just like this is exciting and this is cool and I'm gonna learn how to fight but we're like now it's like it's much more of a mature rooted lifestyle Mm. that I don't think I had the maturity to even accept if I saw it that way because I heard we always heard about that oh lifestyle this but you don't really Mm -hmm. understand that till you start living it and a big part of it is maturity just to add to that point real quick a a big part of it is maturity because you can see people who are in their 50s, 40s, and 50s, who are still just going to the bar three, four times a week, smoking cigarettes, you know, like being like angry. They, they, something they, that happened they, like 15 they, years ago. Yeah, yeah, they just they they live to talk shit and and to indulge. You know, um, I forget the philosopher that said it, but it was or it was some yogi. It was a quote that I read. It was a quote that someone I read. said it. Somebody said Somebody it. Somebody said it. Wasn't, it. wasn't from some wasn't guy. from my brain. <laughs> That if we spend our lives seeking and running away into pleasure, the only shadow of ourselves that we'll ever face is pain. Because you are forced to face your shadow. You're always forced to face your shadow. There is the light and dark side. And you have to, we've had this conversation mm-hmm. before, we have to acknowledge our shadow self. We have to acknowledge our dark side. But that dark side and how much weight it has and how much pain it causes you changes depending on the actions that you take and the lessons that you learn throughout your life. So the more that you fall back into pleasure, mm. right? Yeah. Which is why I, I get I get um I don't really agree like I understand like the whole like social media, like mental health around fitness and like it's okay to be bigger and it's okay to be this and you don't have to look at those people and like mm-hmm. that really helps people who are suffering from mental health issues. That really helps people who are just getting started. Mm-hmm. But when you're talking about achieving real skill, you gotta bleed a little bit. Mm-hmm. You gotta bleed a little bit and you gotta just accept the pain, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. But to, to, to not to. No, no, no. Uh, that was. No, no, no. Yeah. It's, 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 again, it's like what C4O was saying of like, you know, you're the, it's, and this transcends and kind of goes, can go into many different avenues of just, you know, the, the, um, what is it? The, the eyes can't comprehend or the eyes can't see what the mind doesn't know. So it's right. like you can look at the training and you can look at all this stuff and you can hear stuff that Seagong and Sifu talk about and all the teachers talk about and, and, you know, or things that like, you know, Again, when we were, you know, w- w- you know, beginners and, you know, C4 or Sifu would say something in a seminar and you're like, that's pretty cool. But it doesn't have the same meaning and weight because you don't have the same it, – it, now it's translated differently. You know, it's almost like you're like – it's a different dialect. When you're t- mm. when they're talking about those things, when you're a beginner, you're like, okay, I, I can kind of understand this stuff at face value. But as you start living it more, you know, and where, where you're like, okay, yeah, you know, you know, we're training, you know, you know usually anywhere from like – you know, four, five, six, seven days a week between the two of us, you know, and it's like, you know, teaching to, to varying degrees and just kind of always thinking about training and what I want to work on and, and skill and, and gaps in my gaps in my training and things like that. It, it really is just like it becomes like a layer of consciousness that's kind of over and not only just perfect example, not only just. um um again, I'm kind of moving just as a quick aside, but you know, that lifestyle thing, not only just being about how I feel inwardly about training, but also then the training affecting my life outside. The lifestyle is not just, I'm training is a big part of my life. It's not just an inward. Now I'm putting my life energy into training. It's also that training now is affecting outwardly. So it's almost like the, like a toroidal type of like, it's feeding itself in and out. Um, so like, 
being able to then let those things be directly applied into your life in different scenarios. Even the other day, you know, um, uh, what was it? I was in my car. I was doing, um, I was, I was over, uh, Bianca's house and I was doing therapy in my car and Bianca went to go take the dog for a walk and she came back and she was like crying and again, similar, similar, but much less scary dog thing. There was a dog that was not on a leash that they, she didn't know where it came from. It just ran up to her and was like growling and was like trying to get to her dog to, to, to Miley. And, and, and some guys came over and like got out of their cars and helped her and subdued the dog. But it's like, one, that's horrifying. And two, now it's like, but I'm in the mindset now where like, I'm like ready to go. You know what I mean? So it's like, I'm like, okay. Ryan's ready to punch dogs. Like, oh, no, I'm... I, Ryan's I, ready I, to punch I, dogs I, 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 <laughs> right now. But, 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 but regardless <laughs> of what happens, it's like, that may sound ridiculous. Like, yeah, I could, I could, I'm, I'm not even talking about like that specific in sense. I could fight 12 cane corsos, absolutely. <laughs> it's more of like, it's more of like the mentality of like, next time we went out walking, it was like, okay, it's like, you're going to be on this side of me and I'm going to be checking. Like, I was in like defense mode where I'm just like, okay, whatever, whatever fucking happens... It doesn't like I'm like I you know what I mean when you get into yeah. that like tunnel vision where you're like I don't care what yeah this is not I have like a belt that holds my water bottle on my phone when I run and I clip a knife to it mm-hmm. and I bought this new knife that mm-hmm. like has a belt loop and I put this knife on the belt loop and now I have this like visible like sword weapon <laughs> on my it's side just picture, sword weapon. I just picture Ed like in the heat of battle pulls off his knife and like his jeans are connected to it <laughs> he's just like he's just naked like ah <laughs> Dude, I, I don't know what <laughs> you're fight doing. my knife and my but penis Jen, Jenny's like you can't wear that. And I'm like, what do you mean? And she's like, you're going to get arrested. You can't wear that. I'm like, it's legal. She's like, you're asking for trouble with a knife that big. You're oh, asking, you asking. have a full katana on your belt. <laughs> <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> just, just cops. <laughs> oh, um, no. But, but, but I hope you guys understand what I mean. It's just yeah. like like the like being in that state of like, okay, like you have to be like being told to jump and knowing when you have to jump and fucking jumping. Be like, all right. Like, no, like, oh, well, that's kind of scary. It's like, yeah, it's fucking scary. But like, these are people that I love and care about and like. I'm gonna walk with you when I don't give a fuck what happens. It's like yeah, go times go time. Yeah, and yeah that's same why thing when you too, train. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's same same thing. Too, this is a small aside, but same thing too. Even like, again, kind of that knowing when to kind of just go when to go, and also just kind of the martial the martial mindness of what we do is even like I was holding like twelve. You know, I was holding a lot of shit, and we, me and her, were leaving her house, and her dog was like really wanted to go outside. So it's like you know, I she I'm leaving, and then she I'm looking at the door, and she's like, oh Miley, and you see the dog like between her leg and the door, like. <laughs> like trying to just like get out and she like ran out and I just immediately like, like sprinted down the stairs just grabbed her collar immediately was just holding her there and she was like she's like thank you and it's like yeah it's like you gotta like that's part like those smaller little intangible things of being able to be like to not be flustered they're just like alright boom like that has to stop like just immediate and same thing too another I was holding her because well, we had to take her on an impromptu walk she's like I'm not fucking going back in the house you know you try to pull on her collars like <laughs> she's just standing there but you know then like she gets like papa the outdoors they call me <laughs> yeah she is like she she gets really overreactive with other dogs you know and, and bianca sometimes has a hard time you know hand you know you know um holding her so, you know cause she's a pit bull she's a big dog so like you know another dog was coming by and she was like bah, 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 and was like freaking out i'm just holding her collar and i'm like this whole show was just ryan doing dog bah, bah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just holding I'm just holding her collar I'm holding her chest and every time she, she runs around she runs between my legs I move I grab her again I'm like it's okay like you're okay just to like be able to be that person in those situations even something as small and as insignificant as that of just being able to like calm anxiety or keep things safe is like it's not it's not just about like there's a burning building I'm gonna like you know <laughs> cl- cloudy with a chance of it. meatballs policeman just run it just, <laughs> just run into it it's like it's about smaller intangible stuff too like that of letting that lifestyle permeate not only your life, but allowing it to affect other people around you positively. Not to get off on a tangent, but I'd love to hear um, John a little a little bit more about um, Ed's question. Well, coming to the school and coming to Authentic Shaolin Kung Fu wasn't my first experience of martial arts. So I, I knew that I loved martial arts and, and I really wanted it. I'd say maybe like twice, you, you know, like two specific times, similar to Ryan, like as a beginner. And then when, when you found when you uh, tested for your black sash, um, I mean, like my uh, my love for martial arts was first sparked with the the first school I trained at, and um, just kind of going through my training, it was kind of a steady burn of just like this is great. I love being here. I, I I need to do this. And then the time I spent without training was a really important kind of moment of discovery for me too, because I yearned for it. You know, I, I've just always talked about it when I was out with my buddies and like just like thinking about all you know how great it was to to be really in like the flow of training and like how fulfilling that felt. And so missing that 
through my 20s was like a really important moment for like I discovered like how much I really desired it and needed to come back. And like I remember the first day at Authentic Shaolin as like a really important moment too of just like, you know, the first time I bowed on the mat, it was like, you know, I, I was really, it was an emotional moment for me because like I realized how much I missed it and how much I needed it back in my life. So it was more or less like I, I've, I've always known that I want it, but I think maybe there's, I mean, undoubtedly there's going to be more moments where I truly discover what it means to be a part of this school. Like I'm, I'm only in the beginning end of my training, you know? Right. So, but that, that, that want and that desire to always be training has, has been present for a long time. One thing as, as advice, I would say, um, is to, even though you're in the beginning, you know, take note of how much time you have been there, right? And be proud of that. Yeah. So, so you, what, like four years? Yeah. So it'll uh, be four three, in January. Four in January. So mm -hmm. it's three and a half, right? So, so you know, you, you should be proud of how long you've stuck with it and how much struggle there has been associated with how far you've come, right? So instead of just being like, well, I'm just in the weeds and we'll see how it goes, which is kind of what I'm hearing, so correct me if I'm wrong, you know what I mean? But like, instead of just being like, I'm in the weeds, let's see how it goes, I'm still going, I'm sure I'm gonna learn more lessons. Like, be proud of how much you've already done and don't worry so much about where you need to go. You know what I mean? Just attack every day. You gotta attack every day. You know right, what I mean? Right. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, for me to come from a place of, you know, experience, I just, I, I can't help but, but realize how much more there is for me to know, yeah. you know, so it's just like, I can't like, I mean, there's plenty that I've learned and plenty that I'm proud of and, and plenty of moments that I'm so grateful for throughout, throughout training, you know, this is my favorite shit, dude, <laughs> you know, this is my favorite shit, but uh, it's just, you know, having like really grasping onto that want and like keeping going and applying pressure is just kind of like, you know, it's always, it's always present for me. So, you know, even, even when I'm, you know, I'll go like a week where it's just like a hard work week and I don't get enough time into train, you know, it's like, it's just still burning in the back of my mind. And, you know, it's the reason why I've been, you know, undergoing the certain changes I've been doing and kind of right. switching up my lifestyle and my habits a lot and a lot. And it's just, that's an ongoing. And thing. that kind of stuff takes time. Yeah. It takes a lot of time because you have to reprogram you. You have to reprogram yourself, you right. know? Um, yeah. So what about, um, what about that, like, that like drive you know what i mean like do you do you do, did you at a certain point has that spark yet i know it's only been three and a half years but like has that spark yet ever like diminished and been refueled by anything oh yeah i mean there's been like i said it's mostly work that interferes where like i'll just be working in, like four or five nights in a week and then like the only other nights i have are just recovery and then you know during that time there's more shit to do at home and it's just, it's burning the back of my mind. Like I got to get back on the horse. I get it back into training. Like I can't be, you know, l letting any of this information slip any of, of, of the techniques and, and anything. Cause like, there's like one or two moments in like getting back into the flow of things where it's like, how did I forget this? You know, like, how did I forget this one move? Like, like Tannik and eight. It's like, how did I forget, to, like, you know, yeah. but, uh, it happens. Yeah. And <clears throat> so like keeping that, uh, applying that pressure and keeping that spark alive is maintenance, man. You know, mm -hmm. as much as that, that sensation of like, I need to train and I need to be here. And this is something that is like, it's a part of me, you know, like it takes work to maintain that. And like, I understand how difficult it must be to like, and for other people who like work overnight or have to travel, like how difficult it must be and how they can relate with you. Like that you still making it happen as to the best of your ability, even with like, you know, four days in a row in hotel rooms working 12 to 16 hour shifts staring right. at a screen the entire time and having your brain be applesauce yeah by the time you're done right you know? yeah it's it's certainly challenging it's not not conducive definitely you know not having a day job like working nights freelance is just yeah freelance uh, freelance work has its, it has its own um debilitation to it that that is different i mean every every sort of work comes with its own baggage oh, yeah. you know but I mean, it's you know like things, freelance things stuff suffer. is yeah of, of course and, and, and to different degrees i mean you may get you may some people may hate the mundanity of a nine-to-five job some people may need it some people love love freelance work some people have a hard time with structure you know me being one of them you know john being one of them you know right. it's it's it they all come with their own challenges and pros and cons you know my difficulty with structure was helped by structure yeah Yep. You know? and that's that's something I feel like I need. You know, I I would I'm genuinely making moves to try and have a more regular schedule, and uh, updates on that will come uh, in the future. But um, but I did want to swing the question back to you, Ed. 
When, what was the moment where you decided that martial arts was something you wanted and not just liked? Well, so I don't know how far back to go. I mean, like I always wanted to do it. I trained at the same dojo that John trained at when we were kids. Um, and then, you know, my single mom in college, uh, there's no money, you know, and they raised their tuition and my mother was like, no. And then everything else was like, well, what school do you want to go to? And we had school hopped and everything was expensive. We didn't know about the Kung Fu school. And at the time, I really wanted to learn like katana and stuff like that, which we did at Nakado. So I always kind of wanted to go back to Sensei O and go back to Nakado. Um, as I got older and I hit high school, I kind of forgot about all that kind of stuff. And I was more, it was more of something I was into and and liked but i was more about my friends and more about guitar and music and being in bands and doing that like that was my focus for a long time um and then i went to tech school when i went to tech school i met my friend terry uh logic logic thompson you gotta look up his artwork his artwork is unbelievable that's what he does he's a painter full-time we both went to school for cars and neither of us work on cars you just say terry i just can't help but think of the wheelchair me and put it in reverse terry put it in reverse i have no idea what you're talking about but it's actually thierry it's french oh yeah um but uh but yeah so he's he's the coolest dude he's like this this um really an incredible painter like you really got to look at his work um but anyway I forget his Instagram handle. I'll put it in the description maybe if I remember. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, he was a brown belt in Shotokan. And mm-hmm. when I went to tech school, he was talking about karate. And I was like, dude, that's because he was in great shape. You know, I was like, dude, that's fucking awesome. Like, I, you know, why aren't you training anymore? And it was the same kind of thing. Like, you know, he was living his life. He was doing things. He went to art school, you know, um, art school, now tech school, trying to make his way. And it just wasn't something he was into. His, his, his instructor wanted him to come back and test for his black. But it was just something that wasn't in the cards at the moment. Mm -hmm. And then life kind of took him. But he knew what he was doing. He knew how to fight. And he was showing me techniques. And he was showing me stuff, karate stuff. And I was, like, trying to remember the stuff that I was doing. And I thought I could fight because I had gotten into scraps. Mm -hmm. And I had won. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like, the scraps or, like, people fucking with you and, like, threatening them and stuff like that. And then backing down. That doesn't really mean you can fight. So now that we're in this instance, I also, at 21, I didn't realize how out of shape I was. Mm. But I was, like... Pear shaped, dead. Well, I was, I was pear shaped. I'm still a little pear shaped. I'm just like a skinnier pear. I'm like more like a Bartlett. Um, <laughs> I'm um, like a brisket shaped. Just, just being, being actually pear shaped though. That's like, <laughs> you, well, just well, so yeah. Plump. I mean, like you know, like we were talking about. Like, this is right what, about when I started training. You know, I was t- so I, was t- I started training. I was like 22. About to turn 23. So this is like I'm 21. Mm-hmm. You know, edging on mm-hmm. on 22. And I, and I think I've told the story like the first episode maybe, but mm-hmm. but. I, you know, I um, was looking around, and at the time, I was so into, like, Bruce Lee and Bruce Lee movies, and I was convinced about, like, the Bruce Lee hype, that, like, he did kung fu, and he knew how to make it work, and he was a real fighter, and he was this prolific badass, you know what I mean? I, I believed, like, all the Bruce Lee hype, whether it's true or not, I still don't know, but, like, whatever. Um, and so I was looking for Jeet Kune Do, uh, which is the style that Bruce Lee created, if you don't know. Um, so I was looking for Jeet Kune Do schools. My buddy, when I was in like 18, 19, used to work at Huntington Humidor, which was a cigar shop. And we used to not hang, a Jeet Kune Do. We school. used to ha- no, but we used to Humidor. hang out in there and smoke cigars. Mm-hmm. And there was a Jeet Kune Do school across the street. Ooh. So I looked for that school that was in Huntington Village, and eventually tracked down the instructor because the school was now like a Spanish restaurant. Um, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm also like, not a Jeet Kune Do I, school. I asked Jeet Kune Do, they gave me ceviche. It didn't work out. So well. um, <laughs> Fair trade. So yeah, <laughs> that's, so, not, that's not a bad. Yeah. I, mean, I call so, it a win. <laughs> we don't have this, but we do have this. Uh, Surprise, would you ceviche. Like paella. Um, <laughs> Surprise, <laughs> paella. <laughs> yeah, but but so I called up and and he was like running classes out of like an LA box, the LA that was now the UFC gym in Comac. Mm-hmm. That yeah, LA yeah. that was like an LA boxing gym. It was all heavy bags, and he used to run the school out of there. And it was like no uniforms twice a week, two hundred something dollars a month. And I was like, absolutely not. No. So I Google mapped Kung Fu. Eventually, I Google mapped Kung. Now I'm out of tech school. I had worked a couple of jobs. It was a story for another time. I was working at a dealership, and I was making twelve dollars an hour, mm. which was just enough that I was living at home that I could pay for that. It was like a whole like week's paycheck, like more than a week's paycheck. And I would just put it away and there you go. And uh, 
I Google mapped Kung Fu. And that's when Sifu Greg, that's how I found Sifu Greg. I just literally looked up Kung Fu on Google Maps and saw there's a Kung Fu school around me, hoping that it would be like Bruce Lee style Kung Fu because I had no idea what the hell I was looking for. And I just so happened, yeah, come down on Wednesday, try a free class. And I came down and I was like, I'm in the fucking Shaolin Temple right now. Yeah. You know? And like, it was different then too. I mean, like, they would bang every single Friday. We had cement floors with commercial carpet over it. And if you fell on it, it was because, well, you did it wrong. You know what I mean? It was Sifu teaching us how to do dive rolls over sticks with like literally like a six by four mat. Dive yeah. onto the mat. Oh, you got it pretty good. Yeah. Take the mat away. Now dive onto the cement. If you get hurt, you did it wrong. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it was a it was a little different. We we're a little bit more business trial savvy by and fire. safe. So super trial by fire. I still have pictures on my Google Photos of like huge bruises on my sides from when we started. We were doing the eagle, eagle, eagle kicks over the buckets that night, and I mm. busted my rib because I did the eagle kick over the buckets. And oh I yeah, hit yeah. The bucket, and I fell, and I like punched myself between the cement and yeah, my yeah. rib, and I popped my. Foot Didn't that also rib. happen with nice. where we were doing that? Wasn't that also? Didn't you hit your tailbone on the on the handle of the bucket one time doing that, jumping over a bucket? No, I I hurt my tailbone falling at Starbucks. <laughs> nice. Different place, different. Yeah, thing. I slipped at, on the uh, and it was a big problem with training because I I like I like really hurt myself. Remember when I accidentally broke Sifu Leo's staff? Oh God. That, 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 <laughs> fuck. Yeah, we had them set up on buckets. And but we're anyway, over them. so yeah. not to, not to get too far away from the question. Sorry, this Sifu is all Leo. this is all ex- <laughs> explaining, right? Mm-hmm. I always wanted it. I always wanted it. It was a lifetime of wanting it. I don't mean to. I, I talked for way too long. I apologize. Um, no, you didn't. I, 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 but that story went on for way too long. So the, the point is I always wanted it, but I didn't understand what that meant for a long time. I wanted it, but I lied to myself about what wanting it means. I, I wanted it, but approached it with hobbyist energy. Right, mm. right. You know what I mean? Just being there or being with kung fu people was kind of enough for me for a little while. Being in the energy of it was good for my mental health. So even if I was in the energy of it, I might not take that home with me, internalize sure. it, and make it part of who I am. Sure. So How you could know, you also expect to at a beginner level? Mm. Well, I had you to know? break my knee. I had to break my knee and have to build it back up. That was when I got a gym membership. Mm. And I remember making a huge decision and like calling my mother and being like, listen, I only I only have so much money and like if I do this in like one week I don't have enough money, like can you help me? And like she never had to, mm-hmm. but um I, I needed to ask for that because I was so broke at the time. Mm-hmm. And so I started going to LA Fitness and that's when I started strength you know really proactively like three four times a week strengthening my body Mm. and then realizing how much of an effect that had on my martial arts you Mm. know and then i really wanted it but then i really wanted to power lift and then i was power lifting too much and i was getting strong you know i was Mm. deadlifting like 390 pounds you know i was I was squatting like 325. I was benching. I'm well. I'm still squatting 325 and benching 250. But it's it's different now though. Mm-hmm. Like the way I approach the training is different. You know, mm-hmm. I had to I had to really focus on the martial arts and have my ex- I had to learn more about exercise, and my massage degree definitely helped. But I had to understand what wanting it really meant. Mm-hmm. Did I want it? Did I did it? Does wanting it mean liking it? Would you like to have, like I said in the beginning, would you like to have? Because you could say that's a want, mm-hmm. or do you want it? Yeah, there's a different. There's a different intention, badly, right? Behind, I would like to have something, and I would, and I would. I want this. I need this. You know. Yeah. And like really wanting it, really getting, being hungry, and digging for it. That was something. That was an energy I had to learn how to maintain. I had to learn how to maintain that energy. And that came from tactical breaks. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean deliberate rest, right? De- well, deliberate rest is different than, oh, I don't know. I don't know about today. You know? Oh, I don't know about today is usually when you show up, you feel better. Deliberate rest is going, man, this week has been crazy. Thursday, I better take a break before I go to class. Mm-hmm. I better do nothing on Thursday. That's just from like me and my, my personal schedule. You know right. what I mean? But those days when you're like, I don't know if I want to go tonight. I don't know if I should. Those are the days when you should go and do what you can. Mm-hmm. And you usually feel better. 
even if you have a rough class or something's a little hinky or weird, you just wrap it up and go in and say, hey, like my knee's wrapped up. I'm not feeling great today. And they'll be like, okay, don't fucking kill yourself. Right, right. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? Like, so wanting it for me really had to become a fiery passion mm -hmm. in order for me to learn how to overcome my own laziness, my own barriers, my own obstacles, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I'm only just, I, again, Black Sash. That was really when I figured yeah. it out. That was really when I figured it out. Like, I fucking struggled all through Red Sash. All through Red Sash. I struggled hard, you know? And then I was, like, partying a lot when I was going for my Red Sash because I was dating somebody else. And that, that person liked to drag liked me out. Liked to party. Li liked to party. And I was, I dated you know, a party girl. I, I did a little bit. Um, and <laughs> Ed might have been a party girl. It's a, a little bit of a party girl. It's a little bit of a party girl. Um, yep. But, but, but like, but you know, like I, I, I was like weekend warrioring it kind of, you know what I mean? Where it was like, oh, I can balance. It doesn't matter. I'm in my twenties. I'm good. I'm da, 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 da. and like it was not good because as soon as I cleaned everything up, like everything else got better. Taking supplements, vitamins, eating right, doing the right thing, making sure I'm training, going, oh, I only got half an hour. What should I do? I guess the best thing to do would be to go for a run. You know what I mean? Even though I want biceps. You know what I mean? Because that used to be like, I got 20 minutes. Let me just do some lifting. You some know? girls for like, the girls. It's not helping. It's not helping. <laughs> Running is going to help. Cardio is going to help. Form work is going to help. Stance work is going to help. So you have to like think, like, how do I make my day today efficient for my goals? And that comes through the hunger of really wanting mm. it. Does so, that kind of make sense? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and you know, something that like just kind of – just a thought that I'm just having is, is that it's kind of sound pessimistic at first. But like every day, every like time we train – John wants to kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> But well, the it's a little pessimistic, John. No, but this this does sound pessimistic, but it's kind of like to the point that you know your desire, you you want, you, you have to, you have, really have to water that flower, you have to nurture that flame, because every training session there's an opportunity to quit. You yeah. know there is. You can you can let that voice get to you, and you can just quit and be done with it. But your want is how far away you keep that voice. You know your desire to stay in the fight keeps that voice away. It's always gonna be there. But you just have to not listen to it. You have to keep it as far away as possible. And that's, that, I mean, that's real, man. Like, you, you can quit anytime you want, but we're not going to. We're not going to do that. Right. And it's it's small little things like, like um, you know Sifu Leo is about to turn the timer on for you to do mountain climbers. So do you wait for the bell or do you just start? Right. Yeah, which you, last night you just kind of got it going. You, just, you got right down in your position. It, and, it's and, just got, that, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, that's that's the mentality. And, like, I don't have that mentality every class, mm. but also part of being a black sash is knowing you have all these people behind you and you got to do your best. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like right. I taught an intense set, an intense stance work set the entire seven o'clock class. So like horse dance at the beginning of class, I knew there was no way I was holding it parallel. So I just did the best I could to keep my back straight and hold a good horse stance. So like sometimes I get in my head about like setting a good example that way. I saw you. I was like, Ed must have had a rough class before this. I'm like, because he's not, his butt's not almost touching the ground. I'm like, this is unusual. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, well, I literally was, a, I, I taught a whole set that was like about twisting into sitting dragon and cross mm -hmm. dance. So my legs were just like. Oh, the hardest thing there is for destroyed. me to do. Destroyed. <laughs> yeah. Destroyed. It was cool though. I taught them a set that was like a little bit above their pay grade and you could see everybody kind of like. <gasps> you know mm -hmm. but then when they get fiery and they get into it it was cool mm -hmm. <laughs> I love how there's some some guys that just like fucking yell <laughs> they're just like yeah <laughs> like this is oh like, dude that, uh, that dude that dude he's got such a good heart and he's got so much fire for training but he's like such a babe in the woods oh you yeah, know? yeah it's, it's, it's like, great it's all enthusiasm but he the way he screams in class he like has like hidden vocals One! he has like different like 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 hidden like heavy metal vocal talent you know oh, what I mean? Oh, yeah. All we like, need is a blast like, beat. <laughs> yeah, dude, seriously. It's not even just like, one. It's like, what? Like, it's like, you know. It's like, it's like, it's just, I can't, I can't it's, scream I'll, anymore. The, the enthusiasm is there, man. It's really good shit. I, I love that. But dude, you're so right. It's, it's a babe I, I, in the woods. Yeah, he's a We've babe in the woods. We've all been there. So he's just, he's just, he's just, he's just happy to be there. It's amazing. He's it's the best energy. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, it's oh, great it, energy. Oh, that's right. Um, there was one other thing that Sifu Leo mentioned last night that like really stuck out to me, and you kind of touched on it briefly. But it was that you know why are we here? Like why why are we doing this? You know, and, and it was uh, an expression of self worth. 
which I think is like, oh, like, what do you think of yourself? How important, right? <laughs> right, right. How hard you train. Ten minutes of that. <laughs> how hard you train is expression yeah. of your self worth. You know, like, right. what does this mean to you, yeah. and how important are you to yourself? There, there is. Were you finished with your thought? I don't want to cut that's, you off. That's okay. pretty much it. Um, that that's a really good point, and and I think it adds a level of meaning to exercise and to self improvement and preservation that I don't think. I think people look at it as work and I think it's very easy to, to have that be work is a very like fine line and edge that people can either fall off of and then not really be able to climb back up or people that are, or you have like the David Goggins people that are just there like it's fucking work baby or but but the idea <laughs> welcome to Mars oh my god it's David Goggins how did you get here I ran motherfuckers just hold, holding a boat just yeah. both feet bleeding <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, just holding a boat just holding a boat but they destroy my microphone but I think there is something I think there's something um, beautiful and poetic honestly about the idea of looking at l- is is like looking at ex- like let's just say exercise there's other pieces to it but like exercise and self improvement as self love and 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 again you thinking that you're worthy enough and you're valuable enough as you know you treating yourself almost as another person mm. in the sense of like you it's like the Jordan Peter like one of the one of the rules Jordan Peterson talks about is like treating yourself as if um you were someone that uh, that someone asked for you to care for right you know it's like you caring for someone else same thing of like hey if you spoke to if if someone spoke to you the way you spoke to you like would you be friends with that person it's like fuck no well, you, you've all heard me <laughs> that say, person like, would have made me kill myself <laughs> just in, like in like a brief moment of like negative self talk coming from any of you I'll be like hey my friend you're talking about <laughs> slapping me <laughs> listen bitch that's my friend <laughs> but 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 it is but i think there is something i think it adds another layer of of deeper meaning that because it's very easy to just be like i'm gonna get in shape and i'm gonna get abs and i'm gonna stop hating myself and it's like it's that those are all pieces of it but i think the idea of being like i am i am my most valuable asset and my most valuable piece of property and my own like i am my own real estate it's like i'm gardening it's like what am i gardening it's like i'm gardening myself it's like i am laying the seed for myself it's like you are right you're the person living right. on the plot of land and you are the plot of land it's like you need to you need to self you know to feed that feed that fire so it doesn't go out right. but, I, but i think the idea of tr- there is just something that i can't even fully articulate that is beautiful about about kind of like what sifu leo was saying of like being um treating yourself with enough value and self-worth to be able to improve yourself and to love yourself enough to having love be the self-love um to be the the fuel for self-improvement as opposed to hate i I think that's really what it's getting to is being like and not just like hey man we had this conversation but it's like you know know, we were hitting pads and ryan was having a hard time he's like come on you fucking yeah i was having a rough morning that morning i used to do that to myself and it's like does not help does not help yeah and I and I and, and that and that's a perfect example actually. That's a that's a perfect like like that morning we got there before demo and I was just I'm also I'm I'm in the middle of trying to tweak some stuff with my diet. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get I have like GI issues and I'm trying to trying to f- figure out what it is. Um, and the I rest think... of us can't wait. For <laughs> Anyone really, with a nose. Really excited GI for issues. He means mustard gas parts. <laughs> I've moved. Yeah. I moved from four to two pints of ice cream an evening. That's what I've done. No, no. But Ryan instead of melting it first, on one side of the school, and we all yeah, had to move to the other. We side had to. Of we had school. to move the school somewhere else. <laughs> um, just pick it up. Just like walking it. But you uh, stay there. Uh, yeah, you stay <laughs> right. Like, right. Where the viper start? Yeah. <laughs> So the fuel's too rich. <laughs> <laughs> too much Martin air. It's like, and it just explodes. Yeah, like, it, it, it will, it'll, it'll destroy this uh, this Viper, but it'll it'll perfectly fuel this F-22 Raptor that I have. <laughs> just like flying the har- through the uh, What is it? A Harrier. The Harrier that takes off yeah. vertically. <laughs> They're just duct taping my ass to like jets on like a on like an aircraft carrier. Right, send it to the Ukraine. Yeah, just yeah. You want a liar. Just... <laughs> Ryan's ass will save the day. <laughs> But I am trying to, I'm trying to hone that in and just actually try to like figure it out now. And and again, Bianca's been a really big help with that, which is, you know, that's one of the benefits of having a partner like her is just to, to help help provide structure and balance and kind of root in in getting things done that I've had trouble with in the past. So being able to meal prep together and actually try to like, hey, like last week we did no gluten. This week we're doing pretty much no dairy and no gluten to try to see if it helps. But just to bring it back to, to that, and as I got there that morning, I just felt like shit. Like it was just like bloating, just like like gas, fatigue, and I just felt horrible. And it was like, and, and also on top of the added the added frustration and thinking that it's gluten, and it's like I'm just not eating gluten that week, and I just feel the same, if not worse. And I'm just like, what? And so just like anger, you know. Yeah. And and I'm tired from the week before. You know, some days, 
some days you're better you're uh, better able to carry the weight. It's almost like you're holding like big buckets of water where you're able to balance or like it. Like boats. And boats, and, literal and, boats, and, and other and, and other and other times and other times you're it's a you, boat. and other times you're weak and you're shaky and I feel like sometimes that like life water gets on you and you're like fuck and it's like that's how the day goes you're just like wet and upset. Wet when and I was a mechanic, there was one time that I had I was doing an oil change on like uh, one of those big like oh, you don't know they're these big Mercedes engines they're like mm -hmm. thirty six quarts of oil and I put it in this ba basin and like the thing with trucks is there's no lifts so like I don't know if you see like how like Jiffy Lube's work where there's like a big bin or like have you ever been to your mechanic and you see it on the lift they have this big container they wheel underneath and that pumps yep. out into something else mm -hmm. it does not work that way with big trucks because they're so big you can just get underneath them there's like having lifts for them are very expensive mm -hmm. so even a lot of shops only have like jacks mm -hmm. or like if they do have those big lifts there's like one Mm -hmm. You know, depending on where you are, obviously. But I was never in a shop that, mm -hmm. like, actually had, like, lifts for those enormous mm -hmm. trucks. So you just get underneath. And I'm carrying 36 quarts of, like, black dead diesel oil. Ugh. Oh! And somebody on the truck over here, like, went to flick the air hose to get more mm -hmm. slack. Because they were oh. stuck on their toolbox. And they flicked it. And I tripped. And, you know, as you trip, your arms come up. Oh. And I just got doused oh no in fucking motor oil and it got all over the shop oh. and everybody was like fucking ed come on i'm like me like he flicked the boat <laughs> somebody, somebody help me dude you know? that, that they're just, just like kicking you. that yeah. made fucking. me you just got bamboozled dude yeah. that's, oh, dude, that's it was sabotage in my, it was in my underwear oh it was in my underwear oiled up panties into, i had to change into a new <laughs> uniform and go commando all day <laughs> Jesus oh dude Christ. no it's like, like the shower that night when i got home pretty sure i went to class that day too and it was just like i'm oh. sorry i smell like diesel like, <laughs> dude you got to get the scrubby boy out the well, when i used to wear my the, blues the collars and all scrubber. my blue uniforms were black because i would just come straight from work. yeah yeah i remember that um, anyway, and but, it had yeah. a, at a certain a certain level of mechanical soot on him yeah. during the day. At all times, it's what happens? Look, look at Ernesto. Ernesto works in cars all day. His hands are stained. Yeah, even literally. when you wear gloves, your glove rips, and you're in the middle of a job. You just keep going a lot of the time, you know. But I think that this is a great um, point and segue into uh, talking a little bit about vulnerability, which uh, Ryan had prepared um, some thoughts on what it means to be vulnerable as uh, a man and a martial artist. Yeah, I I, I think. Um, vulnerability is one of those things that I think gets tossed around a lot as um, either it's very polarizing it's either from each side either looked at as um, overutilized and essential in a way that I think um, breeds lack of self-respect and weakness in a way that's debilitating for the individual or on the other side it's like you can't be fucking weak at all and it's just like and it's completely cut off and there's no integration of vulnerability in a very healthy way. Well, it's like, it's it's like it's like anything else. You know, there's a time and a place for it. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. So, you know, in saying that, I think when it comes to not only in in my view of what it means to be um, a a good and, and well rounded individual, an adult, uh, a a man, and also all of that together with a martial artist, with being a martial artist, I think being vulnerable in in understanding what it means to be properly vulnerable and um. Enacting, enacting that and then also realizing that it's essential to not only your own introspective experience of your own life, um, affecting those around you and also your ability to uh, grow as an individual and a person and a martial artist. So I think vulnerability, first off, is being able to um, be vulnerable with yourself to be able to that. I feel like that's the first door that you let down is being able to actually self-communicate in a way that is meaningful and truthful. You know, I, I love, I, I love, I, I, I love this, this idea that uh, Jordan Peterson talks about where he goes, you know, if you, if you really want to know answers to stuff about yourself, just like sit on your bed and ask them, but you've got to really, if you, and if you really want to know the answers, you'll get them from yourself. You just have to ask and it's all there because all those things permeate through your life anyway, but you don't have the lens of introspection on to really pluck them out of the ether and see what your subconscious and kind of your internal self is trying to tell you through shit that annoys you, stuff that keeps happening throughout your life, stuff that triggers you. That is all your 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 mind and your subconscious trying to give you hints of things to work on. But in saying that, um, so there is vulnerability of the self and having self communication of being able to be like, hey, what the fuck do I need to work on? And hey, I kind of fucking suck at this. And martial arts is a great medium to learn all of that through because. If you have a hard time telling yourself that you're shitty at something, your teacher will do that for you. So, <laughs> yeah. But in a good way, be like, hey, that looks like shit. And being able to be like, 
and, and being able to then, because in that moment, that that's a super important moment of like, you th you think you're like your perfect example. You're like a high. You're like a yellow sense, and you're plucky. You're like, yeah, I'm fucking. I have I've had like two or three good weeks of like really feeling good, and then someone, and then you have a class that's absolute dog shit, and your teacher's like, that sucks. That's not good. So in that moment, you get to see how you actually feel when you're when your actual what you're putting out into the world is kind of checked and be like, okay, this is this is what you're putting out, you know, and then you get to see how your ego responds, and. And then how you and then how you feel about all of that and what all of that means and that and that dance of all of those things of external events how you respond to it how you deal with your with your with all your internalized shit your ego and kind of your growing self that just trying to elevate and kind of burn off some of the stuff and how that dance and how all of that is um, measured and and balance is what you get better at refining I think over time and I think that's really what maturity is is understanding those pieces and doing that so last point and then and then I'll kind of address it over to you guys is vulnerability with yourself and then I think it's also important to be um, to show strength through vulnerability with yourself but also with those around you in your inner circle um, you know and being able to one have quality people in your life of family friends training partners anything like that of people that you can truly be vulnerable around and be vulnerable with because that is incredibly important sometimes yes you can deal with stuff on your own and you want to be able to have those conversations but being able to externalize problems is one of the most important parts of problem solving because literally just saying even because you even i'm sure you guys have all had this where you'll you'll think of something in your head and you'll and and you can't figure it out and then you'll just say it out loud to yourself and you're like that's kind of dumb. That doesn't make any sense. You yeah, know, there's absolutely. Level, there's filtering. There's filtering with that. Or like uh, when you go to say something to somebody and you're like, ah, yeah, I mean, ah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you're like, you, you know, you go to process your emotions and you're like, you're mad at somebody about something and then you go to bring it up and you say it and you're like, oh, this is dumb that I'm mad about this. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And exactly. You know what I mean? Uh, and so being able to, so vulnerabil Sorry, Jenny, vulnerability is, is a tool of um, self-discovery, <gasps> of self-discovery and also self-understanding. You know, I think... There's been there's been a there's been my goal for myself. Oh, this is not awkward to drink out of at all. <laughs> that water bottle looks like it was stung by a bee. <laughs> well, I want the liquid IV, and it's not really like wet in my whistle, you know. Right, right. <laughs> Dude, the noise that it's making. <laughs> you can't stop now. Oh, he's just gonna chug it. Okay, this is not fun anymore. I'm gonna let go. <laughs> God, that is just preposterous looking. No, um, dude, try doing that while driving. I've done that many times. Dude, Dri well, that exact one. I have a tan I, one. What I do is, like, uh, I'll have a Yeti I can actually drink out of, like, in the passenger seat. Or, like, I bought this because my other Yeti, will, like, went to shit. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, there's no, there's no, like, there's no, like, spout. Thermos. And I got it for, like, coffee and tea. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. I didn't buy it for... Uh, yeah. For water, so I have another yet, another slightly like a half gallon on the way that I'll keep. But this is, I'm neurotic about water. I don't like tap water. I don't like wasting money and ruining the environment on bottled water. So I is it aficionado? I, I, yeah. Um, well, I, so this is my help some people. I do I do use the zero water filter. Yes. It takes all the heavy metals out of the water, and it comes with a tester. So goes sponsor, from heavy metal to alternative. Us, sponsor us, please. Um, so having having. Uh, a group of people around yourself that you can trust to be vulnerable with, um, I think is super important as well because just in general, having yeah. having that Sorry. it's okay having that ability for yourself and to be able to express that to other people um, allows you to truly grow. Again, if we're just talking through the realm of martial arts, martial arts will expose all of your weaknesses, all of your vulnerabilities, not just physically but especially mentally and emotionally. What the main thing that like. Yes, being a black sash and getting to black sash is a lot about your physical ability, but it's it it has equally, if not more, to do with your character. But if your character is not properly developed over that time, you won't even be in the school to test for your black sash. And that's just I feel like there was a story recently. I forgot one of the navy. Um, there was a navy seal on a podcast. And he was talking about how they were doing the sw they were doing the swim test in the pool. It was like twenty five meters there, twenty five meters back underwater, and one guy jumped in the pool, sank right to the bottom, walked. All the way one side, walked all the way back, and came up like gasping for air. And people are like, "What the fuck were you doing?" He's like, "I don't know how to swim." And 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 he's thinking, he's like, "This." F and people are gonna think like, "This fucker came to like the a, a the, the the most water specialized special operations unit in the world, and he doesn't know how to swim." And the guy was like, "No, that's not a problem." It's like it's like what I want is 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 your mindset to be able to walk across the bottom of the fucking pool, not knowing I, we can teach you how to swim. That's the least of our fucking problem. I can't. We can't teach your mindset. I can fucking teach you how to. It's like we're swimming. This is a swimming school. Of course, we can teach you how to swim. That's not the issue. You got what we need already. Is the is the mentality and the mindset to to the, and to. It's a perfect example of 
vulnerability is knowing who you are, but then also through martial arts, it gives you that empowerment to then push, take take what you learn from the vulnerability, but then also have the tools to be able to actually improve and push. Mm. So looking inward and then moving forward, I think is really what martial arts really distills in a very in an appropriate way. And, and you won't be a, a, the best martial artist you can be or in any sort of skill or partner, father, mechanic, anything like that, martial artist, artist, without without have, n- taking inventory of who you are, what you're not good at, what you need to work on, what you're great at, and being able to then put all those in front of you and be like, okay, this is who I am. Now what do we do? Mm, makes me think of what you know, Kung Fu means, you know, skill through time. It's literally know? all it means. So now I, 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 to, to add to your point, sure. I think that when you look and you look at your shortcomings, you look at your faults, you look at your mistakes, mm-hmm. you look at the things that you're not good at and mm-hmm. to improve from, what this does for a lot of people is trigger like a depression. Oh, yeah. This triggers uh, yeah. Um, um, negative self-talk. This triggers doubt. Yeah. And I think that all of those things are are uh, uh, kind of like a wall that you hide behind instead mm. of facing it. I think it's much easier to sit in sadness and to feel get down on yourself. Than it becomes it addicting. Is, mm. than, yeah, I think it's much, it's much addicting. easier to get down on yourself and to tell yourself that you can't and to wonder, how am I going to find the time? Mm. How am I going to this? How am I going to that? Because it's just like when your mom is telling you to go to school. Mm. And you're like, I don't want to go to school. Right. I'm sick today, you know? Because you're not. You just don't fucking want to go. Because right. you know that you're going to go, and then when you're there, you're going to have to do work. And then the work is what you avoid because the work is unpleasant. And and, and I think there's I think there's a there's a sneaky thing with that type of mindset because I think we've all dealt with that. Is one, it's addictive, but two, there is a level of comfort and I think almost a subtle level of confidence and security in being like. You kind of almost it, it's almost like ideology. You have all the answers, and the answers are I can't do it, or I don't really know if I can, and that's the answer all the time. You know, so there's a level of you don't need to push because you have all the answers already. So there's kind of a, I think almost a subconscious or subtle level of confidence and security that comes with feeling that way. You know, because you never need to push. You're never in the arena to need to actually right. challenge so yourself. You see that you a know? lot with people who like they'll show up to class maybe once or twice a week, and then they love to like teach the people who are way beneath them, mm. but like. When it comes to their own stuff, when somebody's like, okay, why does your form look like shit? They're like, uh, 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 yeah. what do you mean? What do you mean my form looks like shit? It's like, well, you haven't worked on your form and you're too busy fucking jaw jacking with the yellow sashes. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, there is. Yeah. And, and I think even us, us coming up in the school, we saw that of like people in the intermediate or advanced class to be like, oh, just like they would just love to tell people how like how like harder it was back then. Like to, like to a much more like grotesque degree or just be like oh you know and just love to like talk shop and it's like don't get me wrong we love shooting the shit about martial arts but it's like just fucking train like that's why i feel like for us like of course we can always be doing more but i feel like we're at a good point of and none like of those people still train no no that's the thing too they don't <laughs> none of those people they are don't. still here you don't understand how hard we had it and we're so badass and we're so this and we're then so why are you here so now where'd, where'd you yeah. go where'd yeah you go? Where'd um you go? so but but and i think that's 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 something to be said about i think we really have and we can do it. I think there's always more to push with this, but I think we're we've reached a nice, um, we've gotten into a nice groove of kind of just like putting our heads down and just kind of training mm. and just kind of like dealing with those little like I feel like that's the thing we don't realize how good we've gotten at kind of like taking the arrows in the back because we get used to it of just like the day to day bullshit. Like again, like what was what was it? We were talking the other day after demo. We basically Sifu was kind of observing and we were basically teaching. The two groups of semi semi more advanced line dance players and uh, beginner line dance players. You were working with the beginners, and we we were literally just doing footwork drills and basic um, basic movements and um, short bows and long bows and stuff with with hula hoops to get the to get the the understanding down of the lion head. And I was working with people who've been in tail that were going to be in head, and being able to um and then we were off to the side and we're like, man, can you imagine like white or yellow sash us like walking in while we were doing that? Like that's wild. Like that's, mm. and it's not even an ego thing. It's just like, man, to think like to be proud of like where we've where we were to where we are now. Like you couldn't even imagine like us like like doing that. You know, like it's crazy. Yeah. And it's important to take inventory of those things and not to. You got to keep your head down for like most of the time, but be able to lift your head up and kind of just like, you know, c- think, come out from yeah. swimming of kind of the the day to day drudgery, which is important, and just be like, oh, this is fucking cool. Yeah, you I, know. I mean, no, go I, ahead, John. I, I I was gonna say just to even go more deeper into the idea of vulnerability and like the benefits and the importance of it is that vulnerability can even go much more deeper in that when you're vulnerable, you're allowing yourself to be affected by the outside. So you're essentially opening yourself Mm. up to learning Mm -hmm. and to being affected. 
So if you're not vulnerable, it's a change. Right, exactly. Right. Soliciting a change. So if right. you're not vulnerable, you're walled up and you're closing yourself off from being affected from outside forces. So it's impossible to learn and to change True. and to grow in any way without allowing some level of vulnerability. Because if you're mm. not, if the things that need to change aren't becoming vulnerable to the outside, nothing's going to happen to them. It's you know, really yeah, I, I think in it's your, really I think point. in your original write up, Ryan had writ that writ writ. Ryan writ. Ryan wrote. Ryan wrote, writ, writ. Ryan wrote that vulnerability. Thinking vulnerability is a weakness. Is a weakness. Yeah. And I liked that point. That that's yeah. that's him, not right. me. Because if you if you don't me. allow vulnerability, you do, nothing good happens. You know, you can't change anything without a, saying like, "Hey, this is something for me to learn." That in of itself is saying that. You know, there's something I need to change within me. I need to learn this. I don't have enough information. I need to expose myself to this information and allow it to affect me. And now it's one thing. It's one thing to say it, and another thing to actually do yeah. it. You know what I mean? And I think that. And no, no, please, quick, please. Um, and you know, I, I, I think that being vulnerable, uh, uh is difficult because we're taught that, uh, you know, as men we need to be stoic, especially men. But, yeah. mm. but. I think, you know, especially like I, I can't speak from any other perspective other than that of a male, you know, but being a like, gingy boy from my own, from my own, <laughs> from my own perspective, you know, like this, I, this ideology that like men don't cry and men don't this and men don't that like, like being vulnerable doesn't mean being overly emotional either. You know, being vulnerable doesn't mean weakness. Being vulnerable means tactical vulnerability. You know, like if I'm injured, you know, I used to tell everybody when I was oh, I'm tweets, so I can't do this right now and da da da. But then I realized, like, I'm portraying weakness, and I'm already giving into my injuries, and I'm teaching the people who are underneath me to do the same. So I stopped telling people when I was tweaked and when I was injured, and I just started like mm -hmm. making them do shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. If I, like I had to teach the kids class from a chair because I tweaked my back, mm -hmm. so I didn't go to the kids like, oh my back, and I can't do this and I can't do that. I would look at the kids and be like, show me a butterfly kick. Why are you doing it wrong? Because you know how right. to do a butterfly kick, so show me the kick. You know, like. Um, do your form. All right, let's go. And you learn how to portray that energy as an instructor. I probably just really peeked my microphone mm. out. Um, <laughs> Clipping. Yeah. But, uh, you know, like as an instructor, uh, you know, like you you can't you can't feed into that too much. Only around – even Sifu, you know, only around his inner circle and like people like us that he trusts to let know like, hey, like I'm not feeling great today. Yeah. Uh, I need your help. You know, but you don't just go and blab that to the entire school. So it's like, you know, who am I most emotionally vulnerable around? My my fiance. I'm most emotionally vulnerable around you guys and my fiance. Mm -hmm. But even then, more so her than you guys. Sure. You know, sure. like there's a different level like, of intimacy. That there's comes a different with that. level of intimacy. So when you sure. when it comes to being vulnerable, it it doesn't mean that you need to be vulnerable all over the place and right. open yourself up right. and trust everybody in the world right. because right. it's not an on off. Right, it's not not, not not everybody is going to be on your side, and some of those people are going to use that vulnerability against you. That does not mean that you need to sh not be vulnerable right. or to shy away from vulnerability or to view people who are portraying vulnerability to you as weak people right. it means they trust you enough to show you right. their vulnerability yeah. and that's something that to be to be cherished and nurtured and to yeah. honor I that they're coming to the world a shining shimmering penis <laughs> um that's what that song was about come on aladdin trying to get it he's on. trying to take on that magic carpet ride you know what i'm saying <laughs> I don't feel safe anymore. Neither does Jasmine. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. You know what? Yeah. If I was in, if I was She's in, like fuck, I'm in the ionosphere with this asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no oxygen yeah. and no barriers. Yeah. This is bad. Just she's very vulnerable. Yeah. She's, just, she's just getting her. She's just getting her neck breathed on while like an SR seventy one Blackbird goes by. Like, yeah. Just like, <laughs> dude, you're just like you're like eighty thousand feet in the air. I like, saw fuck. Aladdin on Broadway, and they went to this. They went to this whole. They they would do that whole thing, mm -hmm. and then there's a projector in the background, like showing like all the places yeah, that they're going yeah, yeah, yeah. and then all of a sudden it was the earth and i'm like are they fucking suggesting that they're in orbit are they right just holding now? their breath like what's yeah, it was like, aladdin the first man in space <laughs> yeah like seriously this is nuts just frozen swollen corpses <laughs> he's just got yon dude yeah yeah oh yeah yeah uh, is he cool yeah he's cool i'm mary yeah. poppins yeah. Mary Pop it's mary poppins cool yeah he's cool oh, it's yeah. so funny i, I, I Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I didn't mean to cut you no, off. No, no, I was going to uh, switch over to I think it might be time for us to try. <laughs> oh, God. What are we getting tired? <laughs> this. Well, you mentioned you wanted us to do it on camera. These are smelling salts. I thought we'd start the episode like that, but I completely forgot about that. All right. So be vulnerable. 
God. Yeah, speaking, yeah, speaking of vulnerability. You're vulnerable to ammonia. So basically, Dude. I'll show you how it works. So, I, oh, I, I work in a powerlifting gym. I know I, how they work. You give it a little shake so shake. The, so this stuff belongs under your kitchen sink, and we're going to put them in our nose. In our nose. This is a, uh, an adrenal stimulant. I, I, bet, I is, fucking bet it I is. I use this before big lifts because it makes your whole nervous system go wild. Woo! It sure does. Ah, we're going to do another episode. Right? You got to get in there. Yeah. Not that close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 dude, you went, you That's went, you, need. Yeah, the, you gotta get in there. You went right for You gotta be vulnerable. The you gotta get in there. The actually right. say to start a full arm's length away, but Ryan, do it as you will. Get in there, bitch. Oh. <laughs> Hit it again. <laughs> oh. That's cool. <laughs> So there's, there's a wonderful individual that we yeah. we train with in the Tai Chi class who is an excellent example at like like what it means to really like hone that male spirit and to mm. and to and to be vulnerable because like you know I love Matt because he like clearly like types all his stuff on Facebook and just puts it out there you know he just like puts what he's thinking what he's feeling out there on Facebook to like his friends and not like it's not like he's got like a following you know what I mean but it just his thoughts and his feelings and like. That to me is a great example of vulnerability because he just like learns a lesson and just like, hey, I had this thought and he just puts it out there. Hmm. And hmm. then he, when he lifts, he lifts a little bit differently. He calls it getting sheet up. You know hmm. what I mean? So he doesn't go in there. He's not like fucking rock. You know, like he gets in there and he's like he, he he's he's meditating and it's part of his expression of self love and his expression of self, you know, like like that lift you know like that that that's part of who he is and, that, and that's what it is i think that's that's an ultimate example of vulnerability because you don't have to hide behind mm. um the atmosphere you don't have to hide behind the scream and the, i'm a man and i can do this because i'm not a pussy i swear i'm not a pussy i'm not a pussy i swear mm. you know it's just like it's just like i can do this and then it comes mm. up you know, mm. and I started adopting mm. that principle in my lifting and I don't get hurt as often. And I think what's important to say, too, is it's like even even I, there's something to be said about like, again, the people that are like, I'm a fucking man. I'm fucking, you know, it's like they are like, I feel like. When when you are the thing. That you want to be, you don't have to say it right when you say it, you probably want it. Yeah, that's probably what it is to a certain to a certain degree. Not not, but but like people that are like that, where they, where they portray, they have this they have they have this negative self perception of them, of like this not vulnerable. I I because the 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 weakness the weakness of 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 not being vulnerable, comes from a problem of self perception, self acceptance, and self love. Mm. That's been the main thing. That I think I, I meant to say this earlier was. My goals for myself have definitely changed. Like, I feel like each year, every couple of years, I kind of like sit down and I'll pray or I'll kind of like talk to God or 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 any you know that Satan, that, that high you that, know. <laughs> that has, Moloch the owl god. Whoever's <laughs> answering, really. <laughs> um, and and I feel like my and I kind of have these these set these intentions for myself, you know. And recently, in the last year or two, it's been much more of like just literally just wanting to understand myself better understand different parts of myself accept them and love them that's been the main thing that i've been just so really trying to like have this real push for self understanding in integrating those things and being okay with them cuz parts of myself and part you know and things that i'm that i'm that i struggle with and i'm not okay with you know um that i wrestle with a lot that um so i i think but but back to that point though of of like people that pro, uh, project that is it, it is just that it's projection it's not it's not there it's not real right you know and it comes from this feeling of lacking and this thing of like i'm not going to be weak because men are weak and it's like it's a it's a it's a it's a, a it's, mis a it's a misunderstanding it comes mm -hmm. from misunderstanding it's ignorance of yourself it, it's ignorance of what it means to be vulnerable um and it and ultimately leads to the thing that you don't want which right. is which is weakness in, in that sense in an ultimate sense um yeah. yeah i mean just like you were saying you know the people that that if you are what you say you are, you don't have to say it, you know. And people that are putting up that facade, they're they're lying to themselves. Yeah, and they're, not, they're trying to they're, convince them. They're trying to convince you and them. Right, and yeah. and you know, like I said, when you're not vulnerable, you have those walls up, and that's just another aspect of that wall being put up. It's like, look at how cool I am. Look at look at this image that I'm giving you while hiding behind. <laughs> look that. at you like holding their neck. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, it's just like they're that's 
This is meant to be like not really grabbing the neck, but you can totally. Do <laughs> oh that. no, I was just I yeah. I went right to there. <laughs> it's like listen, bitch. Like, cool. <laughs> well, and it's this whole like Instagram thing of like all I do is like lift and ride my motorcycle. And that's my whole life. It's great. It's awesome. And, and cut to like, the sad know. montage of him on the couch eating pizza rolls. Just yeah, mm-hmm. specifically Tostinos. You know, <sighs> I um, think it's Totinos. Is it Totinos? I think it's Totino. Totino. Totino's pizza rolls. Yeah, there's no S there's in no there. S? There's an S at the end. Totinos. But that's a lie to him my whole life. Um, <laughs> There's a one S at the end. Bagel bites, fuck it. Whatever. Oh, bagel um, bites are great. But yeah. Y- yeah, so I I think that it is something to to think about to mm-hmm. be yeah. able to be vulnerable around the people that you love and the people that you trust, and be vulnerable with yourself. Because yeah. remember, you you have a relationship with you. Yeah. Because this vehicle and whatever this consciousness that we have is, they are. They're together, but they're separate a little bit. You know, you close your eyes and you go to sleep and it's not your body. That's you processing all your stuff, you know, and that internal voice, that conscious, that spirit that talks to you, whatever it may be like, you have to have a good relationship with what's going on inside and you have to have a good relationship with yourself and you need to be able to be vulnerable with yourself as well because I think that's a big part of it too because people like to put their walls up internally and they don't want to be vulnerable it just bounces off the mm. armor it just bounces right off the mm. armor any 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 you know thoughts that could potentially be painful yet provoke growth mm. you know they they def- they can deflect from that that's when you get that like I'm mm. that attitude you know yeah. like like um and I think that it makes it especially like in a challenging martial art, your body and your mind are going to be challenged in in big, big, big ways. And for me, um, you know, vulnerability and being able to be vulnerable, it comes to me through spirituality. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we don't often, we don't want to alienate anybody, so we don't often, like, get really deep into spirituality. But there is a spiritual component to Kung Fu. You know, it's Lohan Chuan. It's the enlightened fist of our system. Like, you know, it's... It's the Tai Chi and the Qigong are just as important as the workouts and the externals. And a big part of that is because it forces you to be alone with you. And that's why class is great because class is really easy to just like be in class and just be in the moment and not think about anything else. Mm -hmm. But it's so much more important to find 5, 10, 10, 5, 10, 20 minutes on your own to either show up early or to go in your backyard or do whatever it is to practice that and be mindful and just sit and just be. Or even sometimes just walk around the house and talk to talk to whatever you identify God as, mm-hmm. you know, whatever you think that is just what, you know, you know, it doesn't necessarily even need to be this whole like, okay, I'm going to light my incense and do my candles and do my ritual and have my altar. It's like, sometimes I talk to God and I'm like cleaning. Yeah. I'm like, what's up God? It's me, you know? And like, whether that's, I'm really talking to somebody or whether it's just me talking to myself or whether it just makes me feel better. I really think that point is moot. Um, I, I think it's just about being able to have that kind of internal dialogue and whether you get an answer back or not or whether you feel like you're, you know, you're a religious or a spiritual person and you are praying or you are talking to something real and tangible for you, mm-hmm. then that's great. Do that. If you don't believe in anything, then have that conversation with yourself. Talk to yourself. Yeah. You know, maybe not in public, but talk to yourself. <laughs> At the bus stop screaming. Yeah. <laughs> talk, what is talk, have, have that conversation with yourself. Have that conversation. Because sometimes sitting and meditating can just be noise if it's too messy, if there's too yeah. much noise going on. Sometimes you got to just like talk it out. Yeah. And sometimes talking it out with oh, yourself yeah. yep. is, is okay. Yep. You know, remember, I remember when I was a kid, my stepdad like, pull, like looked me in the mirror. Cause I was having like a fucking meltdown mm. and he like pulled me and he like took me in front of the mirror and he was like, who do you see? He's like, who do you, he's like, that's you. That's not somebody else. He's like, that's you. So what do you want for him? Mm. What do you want for that guy? Right. What are you going to do to get that guy where you want him to go? Yeah. You know, and that was a powerful moment that my, my stepdad and I had, you know, that was like a really powerful moment. Cause he's like, I'll never forget that because he was just like it was one like he was, he's not often like that mm-hmm. where he'll just be like, "Come here," right. and he was very much so like, "Get over here and we're gonna talk," you know. Mm-hmm. Like I think I was like sixteen or mm-hmm. seventeen, you know, and uh, you know, transformative really because it's like really you, you're looking at yourself that mm-hmm. reflection that's you. Mm-hmm. Talk to it, have a conversation, be vulnerable, be able to be able to admit your shortcomings, and then and then have the self love and self value enough to then go work on them mm. instead of feel bad about it. Mm-hmm. And instead of scheduling it for next week, just do it. Do it now. Just do it now. Something. Drop on the floor. Do 10 push-ups. 
the rest of your day will go better. Go ahead. (laughs) I'm good. (laughs) I'm gonna not do that. (laughs) We're on camera. We could do that later. I know, I know, but I'm just, I'm just kidding. But you know what I mean. Like, drop on the floor, do ten push-ups, and then as you're going throughout the day, you know, like Mm -hmm. just you, you, you'll, you'll find more time for things that are good for you. It's like it's not even the act of like having huge pecs and like proper activation. Like you're not doing a thousand push-ups. You're a pussy. It's like. It's it's like the small act of doing the right thing for yourself, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Like when you make you make your overnight oats and you take them with you, mm-hmm. you did that for yourself. You know, you made something the night before because you're setting yourself up for tomorrow. Yeah, yeah with some plant based protein. You're such yeah. a good boy, right? Not a good move. <laughs> a literal literal moon sand, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, oh. moon but, sand. <laughs> yeah. So outside of Ryan's bad vegan overnight oats, um. Does any, anybody have anything else we want to add? I love this episode. I thought this was a great yeah. conversation. This is awesome. Yeah, I thought it was really good. good. Um, I think all our bases. Guys, we got some new di- we got some new Discord members. The numbers are growing. Woo! Um, so you know, I, I I don't want the Discord to be me prompting conversation all the time. I don't want the Discord. to Somebody be get in there and start screaming. To, I I want people to talk to each other. Just I want bathroom people to give each other advice. I want people to send send your videos that you want, and because you have to pay to be able to send videos, and we pay for the Discord. So, you know, send videos to the Martial Mind Podcast at gmail dot com if you would like us to put something into the chat for everybody else to see. If you have videos you want to post and you're not a Discord Nitro member, send them to our email, the yeah. Podcast at gmail.com. I'll download them onto my phone and upload them to the Discord for you. Um, Tag us on even, social. Even like a small, a small yeah. thing of like you guys like training. You know, like, oh, like doing horse dance. Yeah, or doing, just something. Just something. Keep the community yeah. motivated. So definitely email us that stuff, guys. We, we got t-shirts and hoodies still on, on, on T-Fury. Go to our link tree. We're looking into a website. We're looking to do a whole huge social media rebrand, so stay tuned for that. Um, you know, like, subscribe, share it, share it with yeah. your friends. We really appreciate all of you. We hope you guys got as much out of this episode as yeah. we did recording it. Happy training. Uh, be on, everybody. Be on. All right, well, thank you to all of our you followers. Did that backwards. Put your hands oh, sorry. I did. I did actually do that backwards. Yeah. My bad. It <laughs> happens. It's okay. I'm just a lefty and I'm a little weird. <laughs> so, aren't we all? But yeah, so. Alrighty. Well, thank you to all of our listeners. Thank you to all of our followers. And this has been the Martial Mind Podcast. Oh, 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 oh,